So page 182, practice problem number five. I'm going to give you about a three or four minute head start on this problem. And then we'll work on it together on the board. I get asked pretty much every year, Mr. Palmer, do I actually have to write that whole thing out? My pencil gets really tired. I understand. I do understand. But alas, you're going to have to tell that pencil that it's going to have to work hard. It's going to have to write out that entire equation. Yes, the time will come when we can graduate and we can, instead of listing the things that could possibly be there and crossing them off, we will at some point just list the things that are there. But until we get that to that point, please make sure that your pencil knows that it needs to write out the entire equation. Before we can use this equation, we need to identify what, please, Ian. Before we can use conservation of energy, we have to identify a few things. Uh, we actually already know that we have no friction. I agree with that, but we need to identify some other things. Nick? Uh, what cancels out? Uh, even before we do that, I agree we're going to do that, but we cannot do it yet. Emily Kent? The zero line? The zero line is one thing we need to identify. A logical place to do that would be here at this bottom position. So this would be what we're going to call our zero line right now. In addition to identifying our zero line, we also need to identify what? Stuart? Our initial and final points. The initial and final points. The initial point is up here. The final point here is here. Again, you have to identify your initial and final points and your zero line. Please, I need to know what's going to cancel. Please tell me. Raise your hand. Tell me something's going to cancel. Eric? Um, the kinetic energy. Which one? Initial or final? Initial. Why? Because... The initial zero. The initial what is zero? Um, initial velocity. It starts at rest, so the initial velocity is going to be zero. What else can we cancel out? Nick? The final potential, or the final gravitational potential energy. Because? Because the final height is zero. We end at the zero line, so the height final is equal to zero. Some other things, Thomas? Both of the elastic potential energies. Because? Because there is no spring. Because there is no spring. So far, in the two problems we have done involving conservation of energy, there has been no spring, so it has canceled out the elastic potential energy. Will that continue to be true from here on out? No, don't you worry. Don't you worry. We will get through problems which have elastic potential energy. So what we have now is MGH initial equals 1 half MV final squared. Stuart? Everyone go mass the party. Thank you. take mass from everyone. Notice we now get that the velocity final equals multiplying both sides by 2 and taking the square root of both sides, we get that the velocity final equals the square root of 2gh initial. We started with this gigantic equation and with this little one with just three variables. Class, do we know the height initial of the pendulum bob? No. No, we can find it. Don't you worry. We have a whole two and a half minutes. No, well, actually, probably three. We can do it. Okay, here we go. Anybody have any ideas? How are we going to find the height initial, Matt? Um, well, you know that at the bottom, at the uh, final point, your, your um, 
Two, two meters from the Okay. Place. It's going to be the length of the string. Rather than using numbers, because we don't have a numbers All right, so why would we do that? And so if you completed, if you drew a line from the initial point. What kind of line? Um, a horizontal line. If I draw a horizontal line, I agree. You can use um, cosine. Notice that this is going to be a right triangle, so we can use so, ka, ka. And then we can subtract the value that we find. The, the, we, we need to identify a few things in here. Yeah. So first, this distance here is the height initial. So what he was pointing out is that the, the distance from the very top of the string to the very bottom is the length of the string, or L. We need to identify this side of the triangle as Y. It's a variable that we're never going to find, but we need to identify it by name. We can use ka or cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, where adjacent is y and the hypotenuse is l. Therefore, y is equal to l times the cosine of theta. So we have a value for y. We don't have numbers, but we could plug them in. Are we going to do that? No. Why would we do that? We don't have a numbers dependency. So we can also see that we have this overall length l is equal to y plus the height initial. So if we add y plus the height initial, we get the total length of the string. So the height initial equals L minus y. Well, y was equal to L cosine theta, so the height initial equals L minus L cosine theta. Again, we could plug in numbers and figure out the height initial, but we don't need to. We can simply plug that back into our equation over here. 2GL minus L cosine theta where that is parenthetically placed, and we get that equation right there. So we get 2 times 9.8 times the quantity 2 minus 2 cosine theta, or cosine of 25 degrees. The square root of that whole thing. And I do need a number, because I have one thing to say about the number. We have a whole minute here. 1.9164. 1.9164. Six four. Six four with sig figs, 1.9 meters per second. Now the interesting thing here is I do understand that energy is a scalar, so we only know that this is the magnitude of the velocity. But because of the geometry of the situation, we actually know something about the direction of this velocity. That is what, Sam? Horizontal. It is horizontal. We don't actually know whether it's going to the left or to the right, but we do know that this velocity is completely horizontal. 